All right, great. Uh, so if you would introduce yourself and give me a little bit about your background. Okay. Mm -hmm. My name is Peter Gibbs. Um, so I'm the president, you know, yeah, I'm the president and CEO of um, Foundation Surety and Insurance Solutions. Mm -hmm. Our business has been in existence since October of 2021. Okay. Prior to me starting my own business, I worked for SBA for 32 years. I worked in two, two in the same division, but two different offices. Um, the Office of Cap Access, Capital Access, and I, I worked in the uh, SBA. It's called the SBIC Small Business Investment Company Program. Okay. It's a venture capital program. Um, I helped start uh, another program called the New Markets Venture Capital Program. Okay. And um, probably about 14, 15 years into my career at SBA, I was asked to take over the um, Surety Bond Guarantee Program. Okay. And it's, you know, when people think of SBA, think of loans, right? Exactly. I had <laughs> um, But, you know, they have, there's also a $6 billion program a bonding program, and it's, an, it's a partnership between the private surety companies mm -hmm. um, to entice or encourage surety companies to to issue bonds to small businesses. Okay. Um, when I started with that program, it was probably like six or seven surety companies, so I recruited over 40 surety companies. Wow. Um, so when I left, um, SBA in that program there were over 40 surety companies. Now surety companies are multi-billion dollar companies mm -hmm. and they're all, they, they have to be treasury listed to mm -hmm. partner with SBA. Um, probably when I started with SBA, maybe they were doing about a billion dollars in total program activity. Okay. Uh, in my 18 years in that program, when I left out the door, I was doing over seven billion dollars in activity. Excellent, excellent. Um, you know, even you know, well, two things. I, I didn't want to be one of those people who die on the job in uh, the federal government. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but more importantly, I also felt that um, as much I was, as much as I was doing at SBA, I still felt like construction companies in the underserved market mm -hmm. still wasn't getting the service that they should get. Okay, they right? weren't getting their fair share right. of service? Okay. Yeah, and, and ma mainly because this industry, there are very few minorities in this industry. Okay. Um, so, so, I, so, I re so I was eligible to retire on August 8th, and mm -hmm. I retired August 31st. Okay. <laughs> and I started my own business October 1. Okay, I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. how, how is the transition from working for big government to working for yourself? How was that transition? Um, that sounds pretty scary to go No, it, I mean, it, it, it wasn't, you know, I've, I don't know, man, maybe I'm, I'm different, but, I, but, I've, but I've, I'm never scared of anything, okay. you know, because, because I, I, I know what I'm doing, mm -hmm. and I felt that whether, you know, that's, a, that's an interesting point, because both people try to say, the government and private, and what I say is, mm -hmm. if you're good at what you do, it doesn't matter if you're sitting in a government seat or okay. sitting in a private person's seat, right? Okay. Because it's all about it's all about getting stuff done, and I and I don't have a problem about getting stuff done. Okay. The the biggest the biggest if you talk about differences, I mean the biggest differences is I, now I don't have to deal with all those layers. Okay, you don't you have know, all the right. Uh, now I can make decisions and get stuff done. Okay, right, right. right. Um, so, so we started, you know, foundation in October of 2021, and, and um, this month we're celebrating two years of being in business. Fantastic. Yeah, so, in addition to my federal stuff, mm -hmm. I'm also a um, I'm a retired lieutenant colonel. Oh, okay. Spent 27 years in the army. Oh, thank you for your service. Um, thank you. Mostly in the reserves. Mm -hmm. And um, not bragging, but last Monday I was inducted into the ROTC Hall of Fame. Great, congratulations. During, during the a AUSA conference, which is, uh, you know, an unbelievable, con considering I'm a lieutenant colonel, mm -hmm. most of the people, most of the inductees were two and three star generals. Wow, okay. And then, then one lieutenant colonel. Right, uh, pop up. Oh, yeah, right. so, so that was kind of, that was kind of cool. Good. So that's Excellent. a little bit about my background. Okay, fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, now, um, 
two years in business, how do you feel you've done in those two years? I mean, I see that you're a highly professional person, you know what you're mm -hmm. doing, and you're not, you're not scared to jump out there on your own. Mm -hmm. So, um, have you reached the goals you thought you would in two years, or you got a five-year plan? Uh, man, we, we exceeded our goals. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we're, we're doing... We did so well, and I, I'm not going to get to the numbers. But no, we, you don't have to get the numbers. We did, we did, we did so well that um, the, the main surety companies that we surety company that we deal with, Merchants Bonded, mm -hmm. invested in our company. Oh, okay. So, okay. Now, so now we have the back end of a, of a billion-dollar surety mm -hmm. company mm -hmm. behind us. Um, the other thing that I would tell you that we are now, two years in business, we are now the number one surety company who uses the SBA guarantee to help small businesses in oh, the nation. Excellent. And I believe that we're the only African-American owned surety agency in the country that has a national footprint. Mm, okay. So, you know, we've yeah, we're moving, well. a little, moving a little bit in okay. the two okay. years. Okay. We right. started, it started with just me, mm. it was me and Marcus, mm. and now uh, we're up to a Team of five to okay. include my wife, who's who's the CEO. Okay, excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. So, um, so you're helping a lot of black businesses. Is what the, what I'm hearing. Well, you know, we ha we're helping small businesses. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, so I'll say that that a portion of our business is African American mm -hmm. business. Okay. Um, but I, you know, I'm not I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. Mm -hmm. It's um. That's if, if I was to be disappointed in anything, mm -hmm. it would be that it's difficult. It's been a difficult thing to get like African American construction companies coming our way. We we have a we have a nice portion, mm -hmm. but you know when people meet me, they they assume mm -hmm. that most of my clients are African Americans. Oh, okay. And I would right. say right. that's not right. It's in business. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Now, um, um, tell us a little bit. Now, I don't know if my audience, all of the audience, would understand what you do exactly. Yeah. So, if you could explain that a little bit about, you know, what your bonding company and what does that right. mean for small business? If you could, right. it's like I'm, I'm asking you to do a little education. Yeah, on yeah, this. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, I, I would, I would say, I would say, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll um, start off with this. Whenever, whenever you're watching the news for the last couple of years, mm -hmm. as far as economics, as far as construction, you always hear about the infrastructure bill. Right. Right? And every time I see that, I want to throw something at my TV <laughs> because what I say is, if you have a company who's trying to get any of that infrastructure dollars right. and you can't get a surety bond... You're gonna get zero dollars. Gotcha. Right. With that as a backdrop, I would say what a surety bond is is a three-party agreement between the contractor, mm -hmm. the owner, right? Okay. And the the surety company. Okay. Right. The contractor, the owner, and the surety company. Okay. And what the bond does, it it ensures the owner that the project is going to be completed in accordance with the, with the terms okay. of the contract, right? Okay. Now, just to give you a live example, like let's say you were the owner of this and this was a building and you wanted to renovate it, mm -hmm. right? But you don't have any you know, knowledge of engineering or construction, right. but you want to make sure that whoever gets this job is knowledgeable, right? right? So you would say, hey, whoever wants to get this job has to get a bid bond. Okay. Right. So that company has to find an agent or agency like like foundation, and they would say, "Hey, there's this there's this project I'm going after, and I have to get a bid bond." Right. Right. So when they come to us, we look at financial statements. We look at mm -hmm. his credit capacity and character. Okay. Right? We look at we look at the financial statements. Look at their bank statements. We look at their resumes. Um, we 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 make a determination that yes we feel based on your experience based on your balance sheet that you can do that job mm -hmm. okay right and it's this risk we're taking risk mm 
Mm-hmm. And, and and then and then we'll issue you a bid bond and then you can go now you now you're ready to bid on that project gotcha right um, usually there's no there's no cost for a bid bond we don't we don't charge for a bid bond okay but I know other agents or agencies they might charge a fee mm-hmm. uh, like an application fee for a bid bond mm-hmm. now Let's say five people submitted bids for a project, right? And you're the win- you're the you're the winner. You're the low bidder, or whatever criteria they use. You get awarded the contract. Mm-hmm. So then you're gonna come back to me. You're gonna be like, Mr. Gibbs, you know, I was awarded the contract. So now I have to get a payment and performance bond. Okay. Right. So you come back to me, and let's say the contract was for two million dollars. Now I'm gonna give you I'm going to issue you a payment and performance bond but it's going to cost you to get that bond mm-hmm. right the problem with with companies in the underserved market that's the biggest obstacle that they face the right. ability to get that bond right so so that's where we come and play uh, so that's what a bond is and that's 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 you know the bid and the and the payment bond um and most um small businesses you know, unless if they're awarded a contract, many times the owner would say, "You have five days, or you have seven days to get this bond." Right, right, right. And you know, there's different ways of getting a bond. I'm gonna go back to the bid bond. You either come to me to get a bid bond, mm-hmm. right, or let's say the city or whoever the owner is, they'll say you have to come up with a cashier's check. Right. For five percent of your bid, okay. right? So you know what a cashier's check is. You go to the bank to get a cashier's check. It basically freezes that money. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So your money could be frozen until they decide to release it, right? Right. Or you come to us and you get a bid bond and you're good to go, right? So that's that's like the bond. So let's say now you get the you get the bond and you're on the job and well let's say I, I'm awarded the contract and you're the owner mm-hmm. right okay and then you come in and you see that I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> okay right so that's because you have this bond right you can call the surety company and say hey listen Gibbs construction company right they don't know what they're doing right so now it's the surety's responsibility to um, investigate and most likely they will remove you from the job mm-hmm. but you mm-hmm. as the owner they'll get a replacement contractor and your job is going to be the job done. will still be done right right right, right. right. so that's that's kind of like the the bonding process so let me take it one step further right so i'm you know 32 years at SBA 18 years running the bonding program mm-hmm. what i bring to the table is I know how to utilize the SBA bond guarantee to help a small business. Okay. Right? I'll give an example of um, if you go to a standard market to get a bond, which means you have no issues getting bonds, right? Um, The standard market, I'll use a million dollars as an example. The standard market says if you're going after a million dollar job, you have to have 10, you have to have a 10% 10% in working capital or, or $100,000 liquid cash in the bank. Right. Okay. Not too many small businesses have $100,000 right. in the bank. Correct. Right. So when they come to me, I utilize the SBA bond guarantee program where I say, but because SBA is guaranteeing 80 to 90% of the bond to the surety company, they're okay with decreasing that 100000 or that 10% to 5%. 5%, okay. So now Great. the company, can they can have $50,000 in the bank mm-hmm. for that $1 million bond, right? Gotcha. But it gets even better. If the company has a business line of credit, mm-hmm. the unused portion of it can be used towards that 50000 Oh, okay. Okay. Right? So when you utilize the, the SBA bond guarantee, you don't have to have that much cash, but you can get a bond, the same bond for a million dollars that where you would have to have a hundred thousand dollars in the bank. Right. 
you can you can get that bond through SBA without having a hundred thousand dollars in the bank. Right. And that's that's the expertise that we bring to the table. Okay. All right. And you I mean you highly qualify these people before you oh, it, go you know, forward it's, anyway. I mean, so it's, you're it's, a, it's, sure. a, it's right. a risk. It's a risk. Right. I mean, you know, you have to you gotta make sure that they meet some criteria. You gotta make sure that they that that they they have the ability to do the mm -hmm. job, do the job, you know? do the work, right? You know, right. from my experience at SBA, I tell people all the time, it's never ever whether that company can do the job, right? Mm -hmm. It's always about their back office, their accounting. Their, okay. You know, if their back office is intact, you know they're gonna be okay. Um, so um, I'm never worried about them completing the job, but. I'm always worried about their back office. Okay, all right. right. Okay, and do you ever recommend before they even get started that they do certain things to clean up their back office, or is that not your responsibility? Well, you know, I mean, so what I what I tell what what I tell our clients is, um, I you know, I'm straight up with them. And I tell them, hey, this is this is this is what you need to have, mm -hmm. right? But the most important thing that I tell them is that you need to really. Um, develop a relationship with a bonding agent sooner rather than later, right? Because right? okay. what happens when, when companies start a business, they get a banker, they get a lawyer, and all that good stuff. But if you're in the construction business, right. you need to have a surety right. agent relationship. Okay. Why is that important? It's important because if you don't develop a relationship with me mm -hmm. and and so I can look at <coughs> look at your situation, evaluate your financial statements, uh, or basically do my underwriting. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, hey, you know, based on based on where you are with your financial statement, with your experience, um, I feel comfortable with you going after jobs at two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay. All right. What happens is a lot of companies because they don't have a relationship with an agent, mm -hmm. they go out there looking after jobs that their balance sheet can't support. Right, well beyond their means to support right. it. Right, right. Okay. So, when, so, they, so they get lucky or whatever, mm -hmm. they, they negotiate from relationships or whatever, mm -hmm. and they get awarded a job that's a million dollars, and when they come to me, and I'm like, I can't support that million dollars. That's right. why it's important to have that relationship with an agent Prior to you doing anything, mm -hmm. okay, right? right, and and the other the other thing that I tell my clients is, you know, it's it's not about where you start; it's where you it's where you end, okay. right? Because regardless of what what your starting point is, if you have a strong relationship with an agent, mm -hmm. and you you know, and you discuss with your agent your goals and your you know, this is where I want to be in two mm -hmm. three years. You know, you can, you, 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 it's to your benefit to start that relationship and figure out how this company can help you. Okay. So right? it, it, it's very important. Relationships become very important. Oh, it's absolutely. like we all know in business, but it's extremely yeah. important in this particular situation. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, um, how do you get clients? How I many, how do people find out about you? We have a website. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, I'm known in this in this industry, okay. so we have a lot. We, we we get a lot of business from other agents. Okay. We have sub agents that refer business to us. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, I mean, we're we're, we're here to uh, we help agents who are having difficulties like placing a bond. Okay. They can come to us because they know of my reputation in the in the industry. Uh, so that's that's what's helped our growth. But now, you know, my wife is the CEO of our company, and she is. She's going. She's going after, you know, um, starting partnerships with organizations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're doing more marketing events. Okay. Uh, you know, so so we're starting that the next phase. phase of marketing. Okay, that's your next phase. But our growth to date has basically been, you know, referrals and, and my reputation in, in the marketplace. Okay. Now, is there any area of the country in particular that you're interested in growing toward, or is that? You still you just want to be national in scope. No, we we um we're licensed in every state. Okay. So we can do business in, in every state. Okay. In, in every state. Okay. Yep. Um, is there anything you think that people should know about you, your company, or 
this whole industry that is it something that you would recommend folks get into if they're in the construction or how you know what's your advice because you seem to be mm -hmm. very knowledgeable and you have a lot of advice and other people come to your advice so anything you want to say to folks out there that you think they need to know yeah so i mean if if, if anyone has ever heard me speak mm -hmm. they'll get a chuckle about what i'm about to say because okay. i always do it, it's, it's kind of funny but it's not okay right the, the advice that I give people is stop listening today. I like it. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean. Who is they? <laughs> they have been making, you know, they will kill your dreams. Gotcha. Right? Mm -hmm. They will make up stuff that don't make sense. Mm -hmm. But maybe they sound good. Mm -hmm. Right? So I, I tell people, you know, if you have a question, Find someone who's knowledgeable about that area and ask them the question. Gotcha. You know, okay. you know I, I'm going to just make a comment about, like, you know, my many, many years at SBA as the director of a $6 billion program. Mm -hmm. um, it, this is sad to say, but rarely did I ever have, like, a, a minority person or organization Mm -hmm. come visit my office in DC. Oh wow. Yeah, you that's, that's and I, and I was always right. amazed at that. Yeah. Because you think every, it was a fear factor or yeah. just not enough knowledge or what? I mean, I I don't know what it is, but every federal agency is headquartered in DC. Yes. And mm -hmm. you know what? We should be knocking on their doors. We should be asking questions. We mm -hmm. should be planting the seeds for regulations if there are things that are not, that are not working mm -hmm. you know we should we should start the process by right. visiting the people and saying hey this part of the regs is not working how can we change it or whatever so so you know the, the main thing is like I said stop listening today believe in yourself you know and um, when it comes to bonding find a good strong relationship you know um and stop excuse me you know um you know what i tell people you know i, I grew up in brooklyn new york uh -oh. so i'm not really that smart <laughs> right? i'm from the bronx so right? i know yeah yeah so you so you know what i'm talking about i know what about, you're talking about right, right? <laughs> but so the thing is whenever this is what I tell people. Stop going after those million dollars. You, you're just starting in business, right? Mm -hmm. Stop going after those million dollar projects, right? Mm -hmm. But if you go after four $250,000 contracts, right. that's your million dollars. That's a million dollars. Right. But why do I give that example? I give that example because if you get lucky and get that $1 million project and something happens, you are most likely out of business. Mm -hmm. right. If you got four two hundred and fifty thousand dollar contracts, you could probably have issues on two of them, and you'll mm -hmm. still survive. And you still survive. Right. Not only will you survive, but you you'll develop a workforce. You'll develop employees that 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 you know consistency with employees. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, you you'll learn in in that scenario as opposed to getting that million dollar job that's over your head. And and you'll be out of business, right? right? right. And and you start off with two fifty, and in three four years down the road, you're doing two three four million dollar jobs. Right. So you're saying you know, you're saying start it where you can start at a small absolutely. level and build it up. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And show a success track record. Yep. 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 Okay. Excellent. 